Before we get started, um, my name is Chris Kokesh. Um, I live up by Scandinavia, Wisconsin, which is uh, uh, yeah, kind of between Amherst and, well, anyway, it's not kind of Amherst, anyway. It's Little Bitty, and, um, and I moved here about four or five years ago. Um, I am a musician, I've been a traveling musician, and um, didn't really play ukulele until, I don't know, a few years ago. I had a ukulele, and um, and I I liked playing it a little bit, but I was always a fiddle player, a guitar player, and um, I just the ukulele craze started happening, and I kind of like, well, they're okay, until I started teaching young children, and um, in the classroom for me, trying to wheel the guitar and then set it aside in simple time and like not have kids kind of all over it was really difficult. I thought, well, how can I ukulele? I can hide that behind my back when I'm not playing it. And it's smaller and it was just, and I started playing it and I realized how much fun it was to play. And I realized also how the kids just lit up when I would play this and how it was easy for me to say, here, you try it because really to get started on a ukulele is, is fairly simple. And um, it may not feel like it today, but believe me, we're gonna get a lot farther on our ukuleles than we would on a guitar or a fiddle, okay? So, um, or a banjo or a clarinet. So anyway, um, so I just, I've just really fallen in love with ukulele, but not now it's not just about teaching, it's about that I just love to play it and I love to sing with it. And, um, and it is portable and they are less expensive as a starter instrument than a lot, and, 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 and. So I have all these reasons that I love ukulele, and I guess I don't have to sell it to you because you're here. Um, but I just think, mostly I just think they're a lot of fun, so I think this is gonna be really fun today. Um, I wanna tell you that um, kind of my plan for these next three classes. Today we're gonna get started, we're gonna learn about the ukulele, we're gonna learn a couple chords, and we're gonna learn some songs. Next time we meet, so in two weeks, I will teach you the tune. It's just a drag to start with teaching the tune because it's just a lot of technical stuff. So I, I just want us to play today. Um, in two weeks, we'll learn the tune. We'll learn more chords, more songs. And then in two weeks after that, we'll talk more about strumming and strumming patterns and different ways that you can strum. And then maybe we'll learn another song. So, um, so that's what we're going to do. Um, I have your email if you, if you are one of the 20 people who was officially registered for this class. If it's all right with you, to that email, I will send recordings of the songs that we do today. And um, they're kind of slowed down and you can play your ukulele and listen to the recording and, and people have found that pretty helpful for practice, I think. So um, if you don't want me to have your email, then I'll just tell me and I'll scribble it off the list. If I don't have your email and you'd like me to, um, I'll put out this list and you can write it down on it. So I'll just set that right there. So if you're not officially registered and you'd, you'd like me to send those recordings to you, go ahead and put your name on that list and your email. Um, let's see, I think that's all. Oh, the ukuleles you have today are, we can't take them home. They are um, being loaned by the Boys and Girls Club and the high school. A few of them belong to the library, but they need to stay here, I guess, for our classes. However, you can come to the library and, and play a ukulele here. Is that right? So yep. there's there's a little recording studio here. That's amazing to me. This library is amazing to me. Yeah, we do have a recording <laughs> studio. Um, you can book time in it and use one of our ukuleles. I'm recording this. We'll see how it turns out in case you need to get a refresher or the recordings that she sends you. Um, and even if the recording studio is booked back there, if there's another room available in the library, we will have all the ukuleles available for you to practice with. So for the next while. Also, I have some information on purchasing a ukulele. I am not associated with any ukulele company or any music store, but I'd be happy to 
give you the advice that I can if you're interested in purchasing one. So that's another thing, once you get my email, if you wanna write me back and say, I'm interested in that info, I'll just send it to you, so. Okay, so you'll get an email from Chris at chrisprokish.com, that'll be me. So, all right, should we get started? Okay, somebody asked me, uh, you know, if I'm left-handed, right-handed, how am I gonna hold this? We're all gonna hold our ukuleles the same way. I'm left-handed, most of you are probably right-handed, we're all gonna hold them the same way. Our left hand is going to be our spreading hand, and our right hand is going to be our strumming hand, okay? So the way we're gonna approach our ukulele, there's a traditional way to hold it, and I'll show you that, and then I'll show you how we can hold it if you don't want to do it that way. I'm not, I'm not bound to tradition, but so anyway, people hold it with their arm held snug against their body, and then they strum it with that arm also. For me, that took a long time. That felt kind of awkward at first. So if you're sitting and you want to just rest it in your lap, I say go for it. You've got enough to think about right now. But just eventually. <laughs> This, this is the traditional hold. People do not traditionally hold a ukulele with a strap. They just hold it against their chest and then strum like this. But I have seen the There are straps. And I, I was just gonna say, I think straps are great. So, <laughs> because again, it just takes away one more thing that you have to worry about. So, um, so I'm gonna talk about uh, how we're gonna hold the neck first. And it's just as if you were going to reach out and shake somebody's hand. So take your left hand, which isn't your usual handshake hand, and you reach it out, and the ukulele neck is going to sit right there. So that's one view of my hand. This is one view of my hand. I've got my thumb a little bit bent, but relaxed. It's sitting at about my first fret. And those frets are those silver lines that run across. It's sitting right on top, about there. And then my, it's resting right here on my hand, not on my finger, but kind of on the ball of my hand, so that my fingers are all kind of above the fingerboard and available to go down on it. I see most of you. No, I are you left-handed? Yeah. And this is a left-handed you? Well, no, but I, I started playing it this way. Oh, okay. And I, I I <laughs> okay, perfect, perfect. I I we may have to adjust your little yeah. you, You've got yeah. it figured out. Perfect. Okay, so I left. We're not all going to hold it that way. <laughs> yes, exactly. Very nice. Very nice. So this is our little handshake hold. You all have such nice, relaxed left hand. <laughs> That's perfect. Yes, that's perfect. Chris? Yes. Is it true that in extension of tonight's class, we're going to be on a flatbed truck playing in the parade Sunday? <laughs> sure. Yeah. We'll be ready with row, row, row the boat. <laughs> okay, so that's how we're going to hold the ukulele with the left hand. And we'll talk about putting fingers down in just a minute. But that's, kind of, that's your handshake hold with the left hand. Everybody looks great. You notice that in general, and I think this is probably true with all stringed instruments, my fingers are curved like this, not like this. I'm going to try never to have my hand like this. It's too much tension. I'm going to try and have both hands just nice and curved and relaxed, just like you'd have your hands when you're walking down the street. This is my strumming hand. This is my fretting hand. Okay? It's relaxed and curved. All right, so then let's talk a little bit about the strumming. There's a few different ways that you can do that. I like to strum with my thumb. So I'm moving from my elbow, I'm moving my whole arm, letting my wrist be relaxed so there's a little follow through with my hand. And so I'm strumming all the strings and I'm not hanging on to the ukulele here. I'm letting my whole hand go. Now, the other way you can strum is with the top of your index finger. And so some people like to do this. And they get the nail involved. And if that's more comfortable to you, then that's just fine. It's a little louder. So you can kind of pinch your fingers and push that nail through, or you can use your thumb. Yeah. So it's not important to 
strum over the hole? Good question. It's not important to strum over the hole. No, you should strum where your hand reaches to. Generally, the place you strum on an instrument is like right about here. Over the hole often has like a big ringy sound, so you don't often try to strum right there. But if that's where your hand reaches, then that's where we're gonna go right now. But I'm, I'm over my fingerboard, and it looks like most of you are too. <clears throat> so that's our strumming. Okay, we're ready. Any questions so far? Yeah, you can not hold it this way because the string is hitting my hand. Ah, that happens sometimes. So she said sometimes this last string is hitting her hand. So we just have to make sure here. I'm going to just adjust your hand a little and bring it back a little bit. Yeah. And when you start curving, curving those fingers, then see how that goes away from the string. So just try to curve in those fingers. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. <clears throat> So now we're going to talk a little bit about our ukulele, and we're going to number some things so that we can talk about where we want fingers. So I have four fingers. I'm not going to use my thumb for fretting, so I'm only going to talk about these four as far as numbering them. If you're a pianist, you start with one here, yeah. but in string, we start with one on our index finger. So one, two, three, four. My first finger, my second finger, my third finger, my fourth finger. Okay, kind of makes sense, hopefully. Um, then we get to the strings of the ukulele, which numbered wise to me is counterintuitive, but this is the system the world uses, so we have to go with it. One is the one that's closest to the ground. One, two, three, four. If I play them in that order, it sounds like this. So let's try just plucking our, we'll call it our first string. Ready, play. Almost. <laughs> so it's the one that's the closest to the ground. It's string number one. Ready, play. There it is. Okay, string number two. It's the one that's just above it in the sense of it's closer to the ceiling. Ready, and string number three. One right above. Beautiful. And string four is the one that's the closest to the ceiling. Ready? Here we go. Now you notice that pitch-wise, they don't keep getting lower, right? Lower, lower, higher. Higher. That's just our ukulele. That's how it's done. Um, if you want to know the pitch names of these, I'm going to go the other way because that's how I learned it. It's G, C, E. I just wrote that. That's how I remember the names of those strings. You can come up with your own if you want. <laughs> but so it's G, C, E, A, and your A is actually your first string, second string, third string, fourth string. Okay? Good so far? Okay. I'm going to add a few more numbers to the mix because now we're going to talk about the fret. A fret is F-R-E-T. I had a student who said, is it a threat? She was talking about a threat. And I was like, no, not a threat. Fret. <laughs> so <laughs> nothing to be scared of. So um, in music, we talk about putting our fingers on the fret. And we don't actually put it on top of that silver line. What we're trying to do, so if I want to put my first finger on the first string on the first fret, I'm actually going to put it in that black area right behind the fret. Because what I'm trying to do is hold the string against that little silver bump. And if I hold it there and the string is flush against the silver bump and I'm not touching it on this side of the fret, towards here, then it will ring clearly. And so then I'll get a nice sound. And that's not from, that's just from my finger holding the string against the fret. So when I say put your finger on the first fret, because that's what we say, I actually mean put it behind the first fret, okay? Um, 
If I was going to put my second finger on the first string, second fret, I'd put it right there on the black part, and I'm holding the string against the fret, and it makes a nice clear sound. If it sounds like this, your finger may be touching the fret and therefore muting the string on the vibration end, which is perfect. Okay? Okay. So we've got numbers of strings, first string, second string, third string, fourth string, first finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, first fret, second fret, third fret, fourth fret. We're not going to go above that. So, but they do go higher. Okay, so those are all our numbers. So we're going to play a little game with that. Everybody, would you please put your first finger on the first string, first fret. And then put your second finger on the second string, second fret. Awesome. I see curved fingers standing nice and tall. Remember your hand shake position. So you're still resting the ukulele here. Thumb is still up around that first fret somewhere. And what you want to try to do is put the tip of your finger, the very tip top of your finger, on that string. It's, it helps that really short finger help. And if you notice any tension in your hand, now's a good time to try and take a deep breath into your hand and let it out. And release any tension. Anything that's going like this, you want to curve it. Okay? Anything that's feeling tight, you want to let that go. Okay, let's put, we can pick that up. Let's put third finger on the third string, third fret. want to know like where those notes are on the staff, there they are. If you don't know music, don't worry about it. It's not something you need to know to be able to play ukulele. You do not need to read music on a staff to play ukulele. In fact, that's the last staff we're going to see. So, okay. So when you strum your ukulele like this, you're actually playing an A minor 7 chord. So you can say you've already learned your first chord. We're going to learn your second chord, we're going to put your third finger on the first string, third fret. And strum, and that's C chord. other two for a different chord, so we want to bring them up. So use your ring finger for this one if you can. Okay. So let's strum together. Ready? Strum. Strum. So, any questions about what we've done so far? 
Why don't you get out to your rower or your boat music, and I'll show you how, kind of how I've presented this music. I'll talk you through row, row, your, row your boat. So, up at the top of all your songs, you're going to have a chord diagram for the chords in that song. In this case, it's a C chord. So what you're looking at, it took me a long time to be able to read chord diagrams and even longer to write them. So, um, But what you're looking at is the top line is kind of heavier. That's this little thing, kind of where your strings start. It's called the neck. And then the four lines running down are your strings. Now in this chord diagram, I've written which string is which. They won't all have that. But in this one, I've just started you with that. And then the lines going across, the thinner lines are the frets. Okay, so we talked about putting your third finger on the third fret. Well, as promised, I put it behind the third fret, right? I put, your, I put a little circle and a three. That tells you third finger, and the circle is just where you're going to put it, um, on the first string and right behind that third fret. Does that sort of make sense? Yeah. This will be a way to just refresh your memory if you forget what the chord shapes are. That's what you're trying to tell us that the third fret. Ah, no, the three is telling you third finger. Yeah, so whatever numbers you see on there, that's what finger you're using. Yes. So then there's this C and these little dots below it and a slash and C and little dots below it. So that's just, I'm trying to represent um, four beats and then a measure line, which is just how we divide groups of beats. Four beats, a measure line, four beats, a measure line, four beats, a measure line, and you're done. The C is what chord you're going to start that measure on, and dot, dot, dot just means three more beats of the same, okay? So it's, um, it's just so you don't have this sea of C's running across, blinding you. So you can kind of know that you're going to do C, two, three, four. Stay on C. One, two, three, four. Again, one, two, three, four. Again, one, two, three. You're done. And that's all of Rover Row Your Boat. Okay? It's four measures of C. Now down here, I've got your, your, your words. You start the line row with your first strum of C. And then on this music, I've got the other dot. I'm not actually going to do that in, in subsequent music. You're going to learn where those strums are by listening to the melody. And it's going to, as you do that, you're going to figure out where those beats are. But here I've kind of I've given you a few extra hints. So we strum row, row, row your boat. We don't strum on row your, do we? No. And then the next measure we go gently down the stream. Strum. Because there's another beat. Then the third line we go. Okay, is that, so sometimes strums fall on the, on the word, sometimes they fall in the middle of the word, sometimes they fall where there's no word at all, sometimes they fall before the words of the line, they can, the strums can be wherever, they just stay steady. The beats stay steady and your strums are on the beats, okay? So, the reason I like to put the chord and the dots is if you don't know the song, you can play C, 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 while somebody else is singing and you're playing along. Okay, so if you don't know the song, and this part is not fun for you to, if you're not following the words yet, you can always just follow what I call the, the, like the chord structure of the song. Okay, so that will be on every song that we have. So I just wanted to map that out for you so you know what you're looking at when I, when I give you these handouts. Are there any questions about how this is written out? Yeah. Kind of a, a question. No, no. You say on, on the top it says C, mm -hmm. but we're starting on A. Does that mean that if you press down on a different fret, you'll get a different note than the A? Yes. Great. That's actually a great question. That is a great question. Yes. You're right. So this is the A string, right? We already said that. Well, as soon as I put my finger on a different fret, I'm changing the pitch. That's exactly what we're doing. So I'm changing, and each fret changes at a half step. If you listen, A, a little bit higher, a 
a little bit higher. That's actually a C. My third fret is a C note. Now that's a C note, but there's more than one note in a chord. So all the strings are covering all the different notes that are in that chord. So they happen to be a, a G, a C, an E, and then there's another C. Those are the notes in the C chord. No, that's an excellent question. As you go, as you go this way, I say this is up on a ukulele. <laughs> Which kind of is counterintuitive, right? Yeah. It's kind of weird, but this is up because the pitch is going up if I go this way. Okay, so anybody who is talking about a string instrument, this is up, even though this is up in the world. <laughs> so it's because it's getting higher in the pitch. You go up the neck of the instrument. Okay, so yeah. So we're putting our fingers down to change the notes on the strings so that they match the note in the notes in the chords that we want to play. Yep. And we don't have to know what those notes are to be able to do that. We just have to put our fingers in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> to start with. So, okay, should we play that one more time? Now that we know what it is we're looking at? Okay, or you don't have to look, you can just follow along. Here we go. So, C chord, handshake hold, curved fingers. We're gonna strum with this hand. Here we go, ready, play. release 
our third finger and put down our first finger on the second string, first fret. Second finger on the fourth string, second fret. And back to the F. Ready, play. 
So that is one verse of Down in the Valley. So if you want to sing the second verse, you do it again. Okay? So this time, if you know it, please sing along. Or if you know it and you don't want to sing along because you're frustrating on your usually we have to sing. I'm going to sing. And we will still pause for the chord changes, okay? So I will still have a little pause there. Here we go. Make sure I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Ready, set, play. actually 
a really great, great way to like efficiently learn is to make sure your fingers are doing exactly what you want them to be doing, right? Just slower. So um, before you strum, that's what I would do. And then maybe do four strum. How many beats does it take you to get to the F? If it takes two beats now, maybe by the end of the week it'll take you one beat, right? So, <clears throat> okay, sure, sure. Um, so let's try that. Let's do this song one more time. Let's do. Um, we're gonna play the first verse a little slower than we just did, and we're not gonna pause. Okay, just to try it out. So starting on an F, and we're gonna do about this tempo. Okay, ready? Has everybody on the F? Ready, set, play. Yeah. 
Are you everybody still with me? We all ended on it up. I heard it. Verse two. Verse two. We're gonna start on verse two, and this time we're not gonna pause. I'll call out the chorus, but I'm not gonna pause from verse two through the last chorus. Let's just give it a shot. Here we go. So I'll sing one, two, the bug grow, and that's where we start. Ready? Here we go. One, two, the bug and that's a great class, um, but it's a little bit more in depth than the theory that we're going to. However, um, I'd say 95% of the time, the chord that you end on is the core, is the key. The core that you end on, because it feels like you're coming back home. And it feels like it's settled and, yeah, I can end there. Da, 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 da. If that's an F chord, you're in F, probably. Yeah. So that's my, that's my short <laughs> okay, this land is your land. I'm going to have you, I'm going to suggest that we learn the G now. We're not even going to play this land is your land. We're just going to kind of go through this position. So it's three fingers. We're going to use all three of our fingers. So first finger is going to go on the third string, second fret. Remember, third string. So it goes one, two, three. Third string. First finger, you got it exactly right. First finger, third string, second fret. Second finger, first string, second fret. So they're on the same fret with one string in between them. Your ring finger is going to go on that string. Ring finger, third finger on the second string, third fret. So I heard somebody say it's like a little triangle. That's what I do too. And it should sound like this. Thank you. 
towards the ceiling one string and then I'm going to put down my second finger and my first finger. I like to do it in that order because I don't feel like my fingers get trapped that way. So I go three, two, one. Put Right from here. 